Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are reacting to a series called Under Mount Ebot Season 1 by Dr. Flying Fish. This was recommended to me on my Discord by Dr. Freddy20. So thank you for the submission. I do appreciate it. If you guys have something scary to show me, submit it to my Discord, which is linked down below. Pop it in the Scarebaz submission channel. And if I react to it, I'll give you a shout out. So this is a series looking at Undertale, believe it or not, and the monsters within the mountain mount ebot and what happened and i think it's an alternative universe to what actually happened in the undertale uh world or the undertale games um so yeah if you're a fan of that then you're sure to enjoy this be sure to go check out dr flying fish for yourself go leave a like rating on all the videos subscribe um just show as much support as you can without further ado guys we're going to jump straight into the first video Mount Ebot Disappearings. For the past few years, seven people have disappeared on the territory of Mount Ebot. Police didn't find any clues on the mountain, making people believe that missing people are somewhere under the mountain. The thing that disturbs people the most is that Mount Ebot is, according to historical records, the place where monsters have been sealed long time ago. So if the missing people are underneath the mountain, they might get caught by monsters. Who knows what these monsters look and act like nowadays and what they might do. Interesting. Okay, so the first video of this Undertale analog horror. Let's go. Okay, using the, the theme song, the theme tune, or the soundtrack, sorry, not the theme tune. For the past few years, seven people have been reported missing on Mount Ebots. I think that's how you say it, or is it Ebots? I don't know. The seventh person miss went missing on the 15th of the ninth, blank. The police have been trying to find any clues of the missing people around the mountain, but it seems like nothing useful has been found. The last, and possibly the worst theory, where the missing people might be, that they fell into the hole on top of the mountain. I mean, that seems very plausible. If there's a hole, the depth of the hole is estimated to be 1,000 feet. That means that the chance of surviving is not guaranteed. I mean, falling from 1,000 feet. Isn't that like the, the height of the freaking, what's it called, Burj Khalifa? Okay, so the Burj Khalifa is two times, nearly three times bigger than that. That's crazy. Okay. But even if some of them survived, it's unlikely that they will survive for long there without food or water. But then there is one thing about this whole story, specifically about Mount Ebot. Long ago, two races ruled the earth, humans and monsters. One day, war broke out between the two races. After a long battle, the humans were victorious. They sealed the monsters underground with a magic spell. If monsters are still down there after such a long time, it could be a possibility that they won't be so friendly towards fallen humans. Or even maybe these monsters. Changed over the time living underground. Ooh, baby. To more primal behavior. <laughs> right, okay, so... Yeah, the, the story is that, like, there was humans found out that monsters can absorb human souls, and the humans didn't like that, so they were like, alright, we're killing you all, and we're... Okay, it turned into freaking Godzilla, or whatever the hell that was. Interesting, okay. So yeah, so the the whole thing, to, to warm you up on Undertale lore, is that, you know, humans and monsters were good at one point, then humans found out that monsters can absorb human souls, the humans were like, oh, whoa, we don't like this. We're going to kill all of you and the remainders of you we're going to lock inside this mountain of a magic spell. Humans can go into the mountain, but monsters can't come out. In order for monsters to come out, they need seven human souls to break the barrier. And that's what the whole... It's a whole story. Um, obviously, you guys who have played the game will know it's a fantastic story fantastic soundtrack and to be fair it lends itself well to an analog horror with disappearances monsters like a bit of history going on there you can make something pretty freaking cool with this so i'm looking forward to it
Investigation. After a few weeks since the disappearance of the seventh person, an investigation group of police and professional cavers were sent to Mount Ebot to find at least any clues of missing people. Instead of finding missing people, cavers found something else. Pissing meeple? <laughs> okay, stop. That wasn't funny, right? That wasn't funny. Guys, like the video if you're enjoying this comedy. It's some brilliant stuff. The following tape is for use by the members of any information given in this tape is strictly confidential. Copying and sharing with unauthorized users, recording the audio or video exhibition or reproduction of the tape is strictly prohibited. The amount of warnings I've got for this or d discretions or whatever, I've probably, I'm probably like wanted in 700 countries, even though there's only like 200 or so. All right, here we go. After a few weeks of, after a few weeks since the disappearance of blank, blank, the seventh person on the territory, that was Frisk, right? Uh, of Mount Ebot, the blank police department sent an investigation group and caving experts to go inside Mount Ebot to find at least any clues of the missing people. Okay, so it's basically telling us the description. The caving experts that joined the investigation were Scott Blank and Jeffrey Blank. They were equipped with every important caving gear. Scott was given the camera and a microphone to communicate with Officer Connor Blank, the rest of the members waited on the top of Mount Ebot and watched everything Scott got on camera through the computer that connected the devices. See, this is cool. You've got you got potential caving anxiety and claustrophobia. You got monsters. You've got the, it, this. It's good law here, guys. It's good horror. The following audio is the conversation between Connor Blank and Scott Blank during this investigation. Okay, here we go. Could you not get any what what when when does Undertale take place? Like in a timeline? Like is it modern day? Is I'm guessing it's not modern day because they've got like swords and stuff, right? Uh Thank God for the subtitles. I've, no, I'm not going to say anything just yet. Ah, they got to the flowy, nice. Uh huh. So they fell, they fell 1,000 feet into a bed of flowers. I think even so, you'd probably still, unless it absorbed like a trampoline or whatever, you're going to die. Listen, if they were, you got to think about it like this. There would be corpses, skeletons at the bottom there. But then again, if there's monsters, they probably ate. Yeah, okay. Okay. Monsters. Wow, okay, so they know that there's potential monsters down there. It's like, you just keep going. Keep going. Okay, this is... Why do they both sound like that? Like, in my opinion, the one that's in the cave, there should be a lot of reverb surrounding his voice, but they both sound exactly the same. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking on it too much. Okay, so these are the photos that were taken. Mm-hmm.
found something. What was that a photo of? Could they not light this up a bit better? Well, it's as big as the mountain, I imagine. The monsters. I thought these guys were aware of the history. So if they, if they know that monsters were there, they would know it was just the monsters. Two people? No, I'd I'd be like, yes, get, get get me out of here and get a bigger group down here. There's a, why would I why? You gotta think as well, guys. They only needed seven souls to break the barrier. They, they've, they've just put down two more people. So if they come across a monster, right, and Asgore, who is on this vengeful thing because Asriel was killed by humans because the socio-psychopath, whatever the kid's name was. Yeah, that, 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 I'm not going into the whole Undertale lore, but you are now feeding these monsters more human souls, more determination. Oh god. Are they gonna come across like okay. Was it, was it Tamriel? Toriel? Tamriel's fucking oblivion. Yeah, Scott, come on back, right? We're sending down a freaking squad of like God, I, here's the one thing I don't understand about this straight away, and I'm sorry I pause and I'm rambling right now, but if they knew there were monsters potentially that were at one point definitely in this mountain, why would you not send some kind of armed group and just, just, just a freaking cave diver and whoever else it is? Scott's dead. Oh dear. What was it? It's eating Jeffrey. Oh, I feel like you'd be able to hear the screams of Jeffrey. Bro, stop talking, for one. I don't want to die! I don't want to die! There's a monster over there. <laughs> Keep your mouth down. Keep your mouth down? Keep your voice down. Scott, get out of there. What was that? Was that something there? No. Oh, you silly... Scott's dead. One more picture, Scott. What was that? Okay, Scott, see you later. This is what the voice sounds like, guys. I don't know if you can actually understand what I'm saying right now. But with this, right, you'll be able to hear footsteps within this kind of filter right but with that it, i kind of got thrown out of immersion because it's like really clear sounding footstep like i the, I, the only criticisms i have usually are like sound design and stuff but usually they're the things that really throw you in and out usually the stories of these analog horrors are really freaking cool but it's just the technical aspects of them uh the little things that really make the difference and really bring you into that immersion and i guess sound design is definitely one of them
Scott! Scott, can you hear me? Scott! The following images are the last photos that Scott Blank took before connection with him was lost. Lights. Okay. Was this whilst he was being chased by a monster? Where's Jeffrey? Damn, that's bright. Some bright ass eyes. Got really up close with that one. Okay, so people missing. They sent for some reason two people down who were just cavers uh, rather than like an armed team, which I'd think you'd get an armed team there for sure because, you know, if you know that there's monsters there or at least at one point in time was monsters, why would you ever risk just sending two civilians down basically? But I do like where the story's going. History of Monster Kind. Okay, so there seems to be some kind of uh, characters here. This is wing. Is this Wingdings? I know you have a lot of questions, like where are where are you and who are these creatures? But trust me, the deeper you will go, the more answers you will get. As for now, I'll leave you this tape, as it tells quite small but important part of the whole history. This tape is 200 years old and was damaged after so much time have passed, but I fix it a little for you to at least understand what it shows and tells. Okay, so what, so what, when is, when is this based? Because if there was analog tapes around, it's got to be at least the 70s, 80s, but may, maybe in this universe, things just work differently. You know, there, there was technology alongside, I don't know, it's a different universe, isn't it? Anyway. Let's jump straight into this one. Let's see where these monsters came from. Runefilm.com Looks like Zelda. Or the Triforce, whatever. Okay. 900 AD. Long, long time ago, monsters ruled the overworld with another race called humans. Yeah. For centuries, the two races ruled the earth in peace and harmony. They did. Unfortunately, it didn't last forever. Why? A long and brutal war sparked between the two races. Why? The humans were victorious. You need, if, you, if this is a history lesson, we need to know why that happened. The of the monsters that were killed in the plains of war were sent down under the Mount of Bart. Oh, you know what? It's good that Uncle Baz is here to tell you why they went to war. Okay, it's because they, the humans found out that monsters can absorb human souls, which made them powerful. The Apparently, anyway. The spell the only way out of the underground with a magical barrier that haven't been removed to this day. Reasons for it being the magic that is too complicated and strong to be removed by the magic of monsters. Mm -hmm. and the monsters slowly adapted to the new habitat and built a new civilization that the world had never seen before. Okay, 1200 AD. The capital city was soon built near the barrier so that monsters could live and look at the sealed exit with hope of getting. How big is this day. mountain? A century later, monsters went deeper into the underground. Surprisingly, the underground was much bigger than our ancestors thought, making them yeah. go more deeper and inhabiting more areas. It reminds me of um, Elden Ring in a way, when you go under underground, uh, I forgot what the place is called, you know, just after Radan freaking throws a comet or a comet comes down because Radan's holding up the stars, right? It's kind of like Atlas. And then you go into that place, what's it called? I forgot, uh, Noct Nocturne? Nocron. There we go. It's called Nocron. And under Nocron, that you can see stars in the sky, even though they're false stars because you're underground. And I was just thinking in Undertale, there are times where you can see stars, I think, in the sky. So there must be in like a false sky down there as well. The new and the second capital city was soon built in the deeper part of the underground. So nice. This could not also live, but explore more parts of the underground without having to walk long distances from the old capital. But imagine going that long without getting the sun. By being trapped in the underground with the help of the magic, the new nation quickly became habitable for all inhabitants. Okay. With magic, many inhabitable places were terraformed to the great places to live. The war 
of all for the sea lovers, puzzling for hot folks, and snowed in for those that prefer cold weather. I don't prefer cold weather, but I don't like hot weather. Just give me this somewhere in between that. But, and it's like nice. It's not like miserable all the time, like raining and grey clouds like it is in the UK. No wonder we're all depressed over here. More and more advanced. In yeah. the early 1500s, the building of the most important structure in the underground has begun. This structure heats the entire underground, built into the air, and also works as a storage facility and also as a magic generator. Mm -hmm. This structure got the name Core. Core. Thanks to the core, it is possible to live in every part of the underground without worrying about anything. The core spreads such things as food and electricity through the entire underground, okay. making the life of our kind easier. Without the creation of the core, monsters wouldn't have evolved that much and that fast in such things like magic and technology. Right. And maybe even without it, we would have so been bright. as much more different creatures than what we are today. Okay, so this is a monster talking. Considering that we are species, we evolve much faster than, for example, humans. Okay. Our evolution obviously also depends on the place where we live and the conditions of the place. Yeah. In our current time, the underground is a prosperous, beautiful, and a great place not only to live, but to wait for the day when our kind will finally be freed from the underground. And That's kind of sad. But the whole reason the monsters were put in the mountain in the first place is because the humans feared them and their power and what they would do. So they decided to straight up be like, okay, no, before they do potentially do something, we're going to do something. Such a human thing to do. It's again, that day will come and monsters will prevail once again. Thank you for your attention and have a great time. Have a great Save time. Thanks, man. May the Lord save us. They have religion under here? Rise again. Okay. What do monsters believe in, guys? So the core... Oh, it's set alight. Okay. So he said the core was responsible for, like, food and stuff. Okay, the core is an area at the end of Hotland, accessible from MTT Resort. It is a technologically advanced facility that provides magical electricity to the underground. There is an elevated to new home in the center of the core. Oh, okay, got you. Interesting. The Decay of the Civilization Right, okay, so this is the longest one so far, guys. Here's some more wingdings for you. I saw this world die with my own eyes, and so will you see what happened here. Right, let's see what happened here then, baby. Room Films presents The Coronation Day. On the 14th of May, 1945, the kingdom of Monsterkind got its new ruler. 1945? That's at the end of World War II. On this day, His Majesty Prince Asgore Dreamer and his wife... Asgore? No, let's stop it, Ryan. Her Majesty Princess Toriel Dreamer... Toriel, there it is. Cathedral, ...located in the central square of the capital. The biggest and the oldest cathedral. On this day, the kingdom is under the control, protection of His Royal Highness, King Asgore the First. <laughs> Asgore. Who <laughs> got... Well, you gotta say Asgore. Okay. They built a whole ass freaking palace underground. That's crazy. Long live our king, Asgore the First.
RCA. The fire is too strong. We don't have enough water. What? We don't have enough water and time to put out the fire. We could have gotten the water from the waterfall since the region has a... Okay, well that's... We could have gotten the water from the waterfall since the region had enough water to put out a fire two times larger than the one we are dealing with. Heck, the whole underground should be helping us to put the fire out, but no. The king doesn't let us get the water from the waterfall since it will waste the water supplies of the neighbouring region. And that this fire isn't much of a threat as we hotlanders describe it. Does he even see what is happening here? The whole hotland turned into one massive bonfire. Everything is burning. Even the waterfall in the cities near the old capital are on fire. But this bastard is hiding in his palace and doesn't see what is going on. He probably doesn't even know that soon this whole disaster will affect every living soul in here very soon. Okay, so he's a corrupt king. But isn't he just mind bent on like um, getting revenge on the humans for killing, what's his name, Azrael? One week after the explosion. Uh oh. Tori, are you okay? No, I'm not. For the past two weeks, I've been trying to come up with any ideas on how to fix the situation, yet no good ideas come up in my head. Well, Tori, you should not stress out that much. You need to rest. You've been looking awfully exhausted lately. I can't rest. Askel, do you even realize what is happening? The core is gone. It exploded, and two-thirds of the territory of Hotland is in ruins from the shockwave or fire. And mm -hmm. that's not it. The whole underground is suffering from the migration crisis. The migration crisis? The are running to the waterfall or the capital. There are dozens of monsters stuck in the border of the capital because there are just too much of them coming. There have been also high numbers of clashes between the civilians and the guards. Oh, and how could I forget? Since the core is gone, magic is now dangerously limited. Without the core, we can't generate food or magic. We okay, this is a lot of exposition right can't here. can't have electricity or filtration of the air. But we don't need core to make food. Asko, do you really not understand the whole situation? Are you really that ignorant and naive? What about the electricity? Without it, you can't make anything nowadays. There have been reports of monsters suffering from famine in the most distant parts of the underground because not only they don't have any connections with the core, but mm -hmm. also they are suffering from the loss of electricity. They are starving. That's the same thing though, isn't it? The monsters are starving, and I am trying to come up with any idea on how to fix all of this, which is weird. Since you are the ruler of the underground, you should be the one thinking about how to fix that. I ordered right. to organize the refugee camps, also the evacuation centers in Hotland, so that there will be less injured civilians. Well, you could have just, like, gave them water, basically. Did you think about the core? Did you think about how to bring the electricity back? Did you think about how to save your people from starvation? Uh, I did, but I... <laughs> <laughs> I did, but uh, I, I don't know. I was playing with Lego. What? You didn't think of that? Look at me! <laughs> I've been eating as little as possible so that Kara and Azriel could eat more. And you didn't think of how to make something so that everyone could eat as much as they want. Toya, I'm trying. You don't give a shit about your own people. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing serious, dear. Go back to sleep now. I will evacuate everyone from Heartland and then order the royal scientists to find any solution to fix the core. I wish I could believe you, Asgore. So the core exploded. And that's what caused the, the fires of the... Hotlands. Right. I love the thought of, like, just... <laughs> news under in this mountain. Welcome back, Tom! to the daily news of the underground. It's been two weeks since the explosion of the core. Since that horrifying event, the casualties have grown from 100 to 10,000. Oh my god! 
around 85% of the buildings in all of the underground, including the two capital cities, have been suffering from the electricity loss. Since oh, it's okay. limited and is only used in some of the busiest and most important parts of the two capitals. Three bodies of unidentified monsters found near the border of Snowdin and the waterfall. Each body has several burns from second to third degrees. The reported that the flu and cholera pandemic has broken out and the regions that were the most affected by the crisis. Lack of food, electricity, magic and other important supplies have caused the most... Okay, map of the underground and its regions affected by the Hotlands disaster. Uh, red, severe destruction from the explosion fire. Yellow, less severe destruction. Green epidemic breakout. Jeez, okay, so there's no win in here. <laughs> what do you mean an epidemic breakout of what? Severe humanitarian crisis that our kind has never seen before. The royal scientists have been working hard on trying to restore the core, but it can take years for the core to finally be fully restored. It. Oh, that sucks. Considering what is happening right now in the underground, it seems like a lot of monsters won't live long for that moment. That sucks as well, because they've got nowhere to go. Like, this whole thing's happened. The hotland, like, the core exploded. And, like, they've got... The, the, there's no electricity and food. I'm guessing what... So, the, the core is responsible for food, in a way. For making food. I was going to say, what, what are they surviving on in this mountain? Other than, like, bats. And we wonder... What we will do now? How are we going to live? Mm. This is the question that everyone is asking. It's like the in intro to a talking head song. But the most realistic and, unfortunately, the worst case scenario is, is that we will go back to the Stone Age. Not the Stone Age, living inside a mountain in the Stone Age. That's the worst. Or even maybe, at that time, there won't be anyone left. Damn. Okay, interesting. So this was in 1945? Or oh, when was this? When was this? Four weeks after the explosion. Attention, the following material is suitable only for the members of the royal family. Seeing the upcoming material without the personal permission of the royal family is strictly prohibited. Nice use of the soundtrack. After a long time of suffering, when we thought it couldn't get worse, another tragedy happened in the royal family. Oh Our god, Azriel died. Dreamer, oh no. Human that was adopted by the royal family got terribly sick by flu. Uh -oh. A week later, Kara Dreamer passed away from the virus that was too strong for Chari's already weakened organism. Okay, wasn't it like, wasn't the theory that it she was behind it was it he or she sorry was behind they wanted to get inside of Azriel so that they could go outside and then the plan was for them to go on a genocidal route and just kill everyone but she slash he couldn't do that because they couldn't take control or something like that and then the humans thought that Azriel killed Kara and so mortally wounded him and he fell back down and died on a flower bed, right? The king and queen are mourning the loss. The child of man was buried underneath the golden flowers with the view to the sky in royal family's private garden. These flowers were deeply loved by Kara. Now mm -hmm. she can finally rest in peace right underneath her favorite flowers. Fly high, Kara Dreamer. Right. Is that right? Fly high. I'm gonna hit the top of the mountain, but it's all good. One month after the explosion. What the hell happened here? I can't take it anymore. Everything is getting worse. The whole underground is suffering from epidemics and famine. Sounds like 2024. I lost my child. I'm starving. This is Toriel. I want to eat. 
I want to eat. I want to eat. Oh dear. Oh, that's not bloody good, is it? Tori, I'm home. I was talking with Dr. Alphys and it seems like we could fix the court earlier than Here's one thing, it's always voice acting for me. Because um, here's the thing, like, I really enjoy this story, right? The story's pretty cool. But like I said, it's the... I, I, maybe I'm just snobby. I don't know. Maybe I've just got, like, a, a, a thing for quality. I know a lot of people can't afford, like, voice actors or stuff. But I don't know, it's obvious when it's, like, just one person trying to do all the voices. But I respect the the grind. I respect, like, the, the commitment to the, to the series. But I just feel like, you know, separate voice actors really does help uh, especially if you're going down the route of actually you know you're talking inside your analog horror a lot of people just do text-based stuff my only criticism yeah is sound design and voice acting usually that is my only criticisms within analog horrors so this is this is asgore talking to toriel Tori, here you are. Did you hear what I told you? <laughs> what the hell is going on here? What is she eating? She's eating her own hand. She's eating her own arm. As good. Also, the royal family was struggling to eat. Jeez. Right. Okay, what are you eating? What are, what are they eating right now? Yeah, we understand you're hungry. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is going on for a little bit too long. Oh. The following audio is the last song that the underground sirens play before going to completely silent. The song is about the hope of the monsters and that one day they will leave the underground. Well, that's depressing as hell. The queen ate her own child. Despite the dislike towards the royal family among the civilians, it still shocked a lot of people. King Asgore the first ordered the guards to deport Queen Toriel and lock her into the new capital, the city that was slowly turning into abandoned ruins. Okay, so this is an interesting take on the whole um what actually happened. Because it was Toriel that decided to leave Asgore because she didn't like the route he was taking because he was going on this vengeful spree. So what in this world so she ate Asriel. That's interesting. The king himself fell into severe depression. He isolated himself from everyone and everything by locking himself in his own throne hall. Nobody saw him in person again. The royal family is gone. The kingdom of monster kind is gone. What a saddening end to such a powerful race. I don't think it's the end though, is it? There's like one more episode. Or is it not? Uh-oh. So yeah, in this version of events, the core, I don't know if the, the, that whole thing happened in Untell. I don't think it did uh, with the whole core explosion. I don't think that actually happened. So this is a pretty unique take. The core explodes. Everyone's like going like, basically have no food or electricity. People are going mad. 
people are dying, even the royal family are struggling to eat, and then Kara dies, who I guess w w she was the he or she was the human that fell down the mountain and the the they adopted her as Kara Dreamer as one of the royal sons uh, but he she was a psychopath and yeah I've already told this story but in this one I guess Kara was good ended up dying of something and then Toriel ate her son Asriel. I'm, I'm confused with the genders of these characters. I'm not going to lie, guys. But, and now, well, Asgore's locked himself in the throne hall and Toriel has been sent away to another capital. Interesting stuff. Let's move on to the last video here. The Great Disaster. Right, so this is a 33 minute video. So this is the end of season one, and this was three months ago. So I'm not sure what they're doing uh, now. So what has this got anything to do with um, like the, the people going missing and the the cave is going down i'm guessing this is just a story building up and then season two is maybe going to follow on from that news of the day his majesty's inspirational speech wait a minute get it how you get it you say that through speakers Why would you celebrate that? Project Spear of Justice, 1105-1970. Who is this Project boss fight Spear against? Project Justice was developed by the Royal Scientists by King Asgore's order. But before explaining what the project is about, we need to know how the core works. Mm -hmm. Inside the core, there are four containers and one massive reactor in the middle. Each container stands for storing and delivering different important resources that the royal scientists add into them and control their amount. These resources include magic, electricity, warm water and food that okay. can be delivered quickly from one region to another in minutes. Okay, but where are they getting this food from? They're not just making it, are they? It's not like 3D printed food. These containers in control send their resources into the reactor that separates and transports them into various pipes that are inside the walls and roofs of the mountain across every part of the underground. Right. If there is imbalance between the containers, like the lack of water, for example, the structure needs to be closed before the containers transport them into the main reactor. Because okay. if the reactor gets imbalanced amount of the resources, it can cause a variety of issues. Such as? Mixing resources with each other too. Explosions. What? Did I just say explosions? The structure must be put on a low power mode, which slows the process of the core. It might be annoying to the civilians that their food is delayed, but it is for their own good. After the structure is in low power mode, 
the scientists used the magic from the magic container to generate the missing amount of food to make the balanced amount of the resources. Wait. The magic itself is getting connected oh, by okay. monsters. So it's magic that's... They get to fill the container through special machines made by the scientists. Mostly the scientists themselves give their magic to fill the containers. After there is a balance between the resources, the core is getting turned back on the normal working mode. Right. Now, about the project... I highly scale. recommend in the future as well to the creator, captions are very important. Like at the very start you did it with like the, the conversations. But this can be very hard of hearing for people, like people with hard of hearing. I mean, I can hear perfectly and I, I'm struggling Justice. with what's being said. The captions are doing just about good the here, but... The objective of the project is to send a massive amount of magic from the cause reactor straight into the barrier through the special pipes. Theoretically, the big amount of magic might overpower the magic that the barrier is made of. Which oh. led to its destruction and eventually the freedom of the monster kind. The possibility of this project to be successful is unlikely, though His Majesty is determined in its succession. Okay, brilliant stuff. So using the core to get all this magic, fire it at the barrier and hope that it breaks the barrier. Okay, so that windings there has a translation here in the comments from the creator themselves. They didn't realize that they made a death sentence for themselves when they started this project. If the process of sending the magic from the core straight into the barrier would have went perfectly, it would still have ended in disaster because the core and especially the pipes weren't built for the kind of pressure that they wanted to put the core in. Oh dear, bloody death trap. Guys, sorry, I can hear my cat. You have to say hello to my cat. You gotta get down, buddy. Come on. It's raining. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you're shaking your water everywhere, mate. Oh, no. Look at this boy, so wet. What have you been doing, Gitter, man? Tell the people what you've been doing. I have been creating calamity so fast, humanity will be talking about it for decades. Hey, that's interesting stuff, get him, mate. Told him not to go out in the rain. Went out in the rain. Anyway, let's move on. 26th of April, 1973, 7.30. Dr. Sparkle, head royal scientist deputy. Dr. Fergus, second level royal scientist. Always th 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 this is the problem with analog horrors is that that constant buzzing sound you hear is good for ambience but it completely overpowers the speech sometimes and it's cool if you have captions you know but you don't have captions and we're relying on auto captions at the moment which isn't good because they usually get a lot of it wrong so anyway we are pretty much making a historical event where we might have found a solution to finally break the barrier okay Free ourselves from the underground. Okay. Free ourselves from the underground. First, I need to block the passages of the continuous reactor. Yes. Oh, but before I'm going to do that, I think I really need to. Is this. Is this. No, okay. Never mind. Even if the this project Spear of Justice isn't going to work, it would still be nice to record it as one of the many experiments of ours. You may, this out. experiment is going to, you're just going to blow up underground. It's like activating a nuclear reactor and not really knowing what to do or how to calm it down. It's like building up all this nuclear energy and trying to force it somewhere. Shit's going to go bad if you don't know how to control it. <laughs> Maybe even this day will be shown in schools as one of the many attempts of our kind trying to break free. Or maybe, if this is going to be successful, this tape will be one of the most important pieces of evidence of our kind and our greatest achievements. Mm -hmm. And we will make history. Yeah. I will make history. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, what I need to do... Ah, right. What I need to do? Turn into a pilot there. And 
There we go. That vocal fry. Fergus, are you ready? Oh, yes, just one second. It's really hard to hear. 26th of April, 7.40 p.m. It took me a while to realize that the 26th of April was actually the date of Chernobyl in 1986. So maybe this is just a direct reference to that. Okay, so now we have to transport magic from the magic container to pipe W that connects to pipe E, which will then be delivered straight to the world, I guess. And there, the king and his soldiers will use the pipe as cannon of sorts to shoot straight into the barrier. Oh, sure. interesting. All right. Did you block the passages? Yes, everything is fine. Okay, good. So, uh, oh my god, my cat. Send the magic from the magic container to pipe W, which will then send to pipe E, and then pipe S E. Basically, straight to the corridor where the barrier is located. The king and the engineers already pulled the pipe from the underground and it's facing the barrier. <laughs> I can barely hold my excitement. Even if this isn't gonna work, it would still be a nice try. Yeah. It's gonna. What have you done? What are you gonna do here? Weaken the barrier. I mean, we live in a very technologically advanced age, so now yeah. we have much more possibilities and opportunities. And for example, a hundred years ago. True. You're right. Okay. Everything should be on its place now. Now all we need to do is to send the magic into previously set points. I'm guessing this magical barrier has the power also to completely scramble any kind of radio waves or whatever so that these monsters can't broadcast outside of the mountains. Okay, this one right here. Okay. Everything is out of this place, you ready? I sure am. Here we go. the destination. Uh, about five to ten minutes. All right. All right. Hey, Sparkle, you want me to bring you something to drink? As a celebration of possibly succeeding in our project. Well, don't celebrate too early. Don't Sparkle. count your eggs yes, before they hatch. Did, did you block the passages of the containers to the main reactor? Uh, yes, I did. What's wrong? Look at the screen. Uh-oh. What's happening? Why, why does it show that three containers release their contents into the main reactor? Oh. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, Fergus, that was the first thing that we needed to do. Did <laughs> you, you forget to do that? You no, fucking uh, idiot. I was sure I blocked them. Do you, do you know what could have happened? He's a frog. <laughs> Leave him alone. Oh god, this is like Chernobyl. This is basically the Chernobyl of Mount Ebot. Uh-oh. Wow. So they only just got this core working again, and now they're about to destroy it again. Go, go and push the emergency button. Oh, it, it doesn't work. What? You screwed. God damn it. This is Dr. Sparkle speaking. There is a reason. Dr. Sparkle is your name. That is insane. Source imbalance in the core. And this guy could have like five PhDs, but his name's Dr. Sparkle. That's the crazy. This system doesn't work. I need all available scientists and engineers to go into the core and help us to fix this before it's too late. There's only me and Dr. Fergus. We need more people here. The pressure levels have reached its maximum point. I need all available scientists and engineers to come Oh dear. Out.
gonna blow. What's the noise? The pipes. They can't take the. There we go. Yeah. Try telling them, guys. I try telling them. Did that blow up the mountain? Photo of the first explosion taken about five kilometers, 3.1 miles away from ground zero around 7.45 p.m. The Royal Castle. Hang on. 7.45. Okay, so this is 10 minutes after. King Asgore I, ruling the kingdom since 1945. Magic sports arrive at this moment. This is 10 minutes after. Did they not hear that explosion? Maybe the royal scientists delayed the deployment. It could be possible, but why? Everything should be working well. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. Uh, Dr. Alphys, what's wrong? You don't look so good. Okay, so Dr. <laughs> Alphys was the one who found out that you could extract determination from human cells, Four. right? It and she injected it into a flower, replanted it, and that flower grew it to flowy, but was a husk of Asriel and Asriel's memories, but it wasn't actually Asriel. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I'm so confused. Okay, so the thing at the start was 1970. But this is... So this is in 1972. They require water from neighboring waterfall region. Your Oh, okay. Please. This is... This is giving us a bit of backstory before, like, the explosion, the core explosion. Oh, it's nothing, really, uh, about the water. Uh, why, why, why do they need the water so much that they require more water from another region? I, I'm sure they'll be fine, and the fire will be put. Sure, they'll be fine. But, but... Pull the weight, man. Your Majesty. I answered your requests. You were dismissed. Wow. I guess you know when you're living in your freaking ivory tower. Your Majesty, was she serious uh, about the core exploding? Your Majesty, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I need some space. Some space. There's people dying, man. Why not just give it from the region? Like what? What? So it's. Oh yeah, we would help you put out your fires, but then that means that we're going to be taking water from another region, and you know, they're going to be a little bit annoyed, thinking, take the water away, if I'm saving 10,000 people's lives at this point, go ahead, you know, it's all good. Call between the underground firefighting department and the Hotland firefighting department. Underground fire department with your emergency. It is literally Chernobyl, like Chernobyl oh, well, in the mountain. Our water supplies are running out. Okay, let me contact you to the local Hotland firefighter station. Everyone from every single station here in Hotland is already here, but it's still not enough to put the fire down. Everyone from every single station here in Hotland is already here, but it's still not enough to put the fire down. We need more water from neighboring regions to put the fire down. I understand. I contacted the waterfall firefighters department. The waterfall firefighters are on their way. Can you explain what exactly happened? Mm. Everything was quiet until the court started shaking violently. We thought uh, that it was just doing its job as usual, just a bit more active, and then suddenly alarms broke out, and then it just blows up. Uh oh. Just where the hell is the water from waterfall? It's on its way. It's gonna arrive soon. It has been over 30 minutes, and it's still not here. This is quite a realistic conversation, to be fair. Second explosion occurred at 8.26 p.m. It was so loud that everyone from every corner of the underground could not hit, only hear it, but feel the ground shaking. What about people outside the mountain? The royal castle. Maybe it's the magic that finally... Your Majesty! Oh Your my god, this guy is so in denial. Your Majesty! 
What's wrong? The court. It's, it's a the river course. in Egypt. But haven't I told you and Dr. Alphys that I do not allow scent water from the waterfall? The fire is surely not as dangerous as people oh say. Oh my god. Majesty, the core exploded again. Much stronger than before. Uh there have already been reports of hundreds of deaths and thousands of injured people around Hawkland. The, the shockwave from the explosion damaged some of the pipelines in other regions. Your Majesty, this is a severe disaster that is going to affect hundreds of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands? How many people are living in this mountain? Including the royal family. Oh, it's not my problem, mate. What are your orders? Your Majesty? Oh. Contact me with the royal scientists immediately. Yes, in a minute. Is that another shake? Okay, here we go. We got another one here. You know what's the most funny about this whole situation? When monsters were just sealed under the mountain, they obviously had no core. Not only that, but when they were sealed underground, they eventually faced their process of evol evolution when their bodies and behavior changed. But it didn't bring any negative effects. It made them more agile, and they could survive without food or water for much longer than before. The same thing would have happened with them again when the core exploded. But the main problem was that the monsters became too spoiled with all the technologies and privileges they had that their ancestors could not even dream about. The newer generation became too carefree, too sensitive, too dependent on their creations. Did a boomer write this? These goddamn millennials! Goddamn these Gen Zs and these Generation Alphas! I bought my house for a pack of raisins! Monsters back in the day didn't have electricity and were living just fine. Meanwhile, for the new generation, if there was, for example, a temporary power outage or an internet outage, if they would even have internet back then, the whole underground would have drowned in hysteria, only worsening the situation. Monsters doomed themselves by trying to live more comfortable comfortable and easy lives. Wow, you know, there's probably truth in that, to be fair. Like you go like you go back through the ages and people were a lot more tougher back then because I guess we, we they weren't spoiled with the things we have today. Dr. Alphys? Oh, Dr. Alphys. Your Majesty, welcome back. I just finished the statistics of civilian casualties. One and a half weeks after you organized the evacuation of Hotlanders to the refugee camps in the outskirts of Hotland, the casualties decreased by 40%. I, I know it's not as good as 80%, for example, but still good, right? Ah, absolutely. That's wonderful to hear. There's more good news. Why is this guy the king? The blueprints of the core were intact. That means we can use them to rebuild the core and, and instead of trying to build it from memories and photos. That's fantastic. <laughs> didn't expect to hear two good news in a row, especially what? during such a difficult time for all of us. Sure, buddy. Hey. Yep. Oh my god. You could have had a little bit, a little bit of a pain, painful moment, but now you gone and gave everyone an excruciating, hey, excruciating hey, amount of pain. I made some cup noodles for us. Would you like some? Uh, sure. Thank you. Cup noodles? Oh, they've been, well, not bad, but could have been better. Mm -hmm. Toriel is acting weird, but Azriel has been doing just fine. He stays at home more often than usual for obvious reasons, but other than that, he's been fine. Yeah. What do you mean by Toriel acting weird? Yeah, what's Toriel doing? Oh. Since the explosion, she has been acting strange. By, for example, not eating much. I mean, I know I yeah, she's, she's understand the current situation, but we still have enough food and water for those all dead people. But she either gives most of the food supplies to Azriel, even too much than needed, or she simply refuses to eat. She's saying stuff like, I can't look at the food and eat it while there are so many people out there. I mean, that's fair enough, but at the same time, there's not a lot you can really do. I told you that despite the difficulties, the food and water supplies are getting sent to those who are in need, but she just simply refuses to listen. 
she says that she won't eat a crumb until I will give enough food to every living soul in the underground. Damn. How are you meant to do that without the core? She doesn't do anything. She just belittles me and complains about me not doing the things that she thinks. I don't blame her, buddy. She really wants to act as some sort of a hero by pretty much starving herself and... I mean, I don't know. Uh, like I said, at the same time, not doing anything useful. I just hope that everything will get better soon. I'm sure She's everything She's queen of the people. Fine. Maybe Her Majesty is just very stressed out and, and might say and do strange things? Possibly. She has been really emotional for as long as I remember, so maybe it will eventually fade away. I'm sure of that. Thank right. You, Doctor. Genuinely. I really appreciate your kind words. <laughs> Do you want to take some of the noodles so that your family can have some too? Yeah, where are you getting these noodles from? Uh, give me get, get give me more of these noodles. I don't know about Toriel since she will most likely refuse so that she can pretend to be a poor starving civilian. But Asriel and Co <clears throat> Asriel might enjoy them a lot. Great. Uh, Asriel and Co <clears throat> Asriel might enjoy them a lot. Oh, so what? They they haven't what? Why? He was about to say Kara. Great. Uh, I'll give some for your family. Thank you. I will always appreciate your help. Don't mind it. I should thank you for uh, always coming here and helping me and other people to organize nationwide aid. Nationwide? <laughs> the bank. Orders and listen to your advices. Nothing else. I'm still thankful to you for, for for simply coming here and at least trying to fix the situation. You're always welcome, Doctor. Right. One month after the explosion, okay, so we know what happens here. when Toriel, Toriel ate Azriel, right? What is that noise? Is Dad back? Oh, is this from freaking Azriel's point of view? This is going to be crap. I miss him. He's been at work for so long today. WD-40 immediately. Sort those hinges out. Oh, jeez. Where's the light coming from? Mum? Oh my god, ew! I do you mean eaten alive? The Queen ate her own child by T.R. Fox. On the blank of May 1973, approximately at 4am, it has been reported that Her Majesty Queen Toriel I committed an act of murder and cannibalism of her own child, Prince Azriel. His Majesty King Asgore I found his wife in their son's bedroom, sitting in front of a half mauled corpse. Jeez. Is that meant to be Asriel screaming in the background? That's kind of haunting. The Royal Castle, 10 a.m. Your Majesty! Your Majesty! Oh yeah, didn't he lock himself? Your, your what happened to him? He turned into like a freaking chimpanzee! I, I'm so sorry for what happened. Uh, what should we do? What, what can I do for you? There's no need for On the throne room. I don't want to look around. I don't want to look at what have I done. It's all my fault. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Yeah, to be fair, what, like, like wanting to blast out? To be fair, I understand the need of wanting to be free from being trapped. But obviously you had a good thing going. But obviously, yeah, in the back of your mind, you're going to be like, there could be so much more. And, you know, you want to try your best 
to get out. But yeah, if it wasn't for that experiment, this wouldn't have happened. Thank you so much, Dr. Alphys. Dr. Alvis. Al Alphys? Where did he leave you? About 1.5... Is that 1.5 or 1 to 5? Two and a half weeks. The royal okay. King Asgore, well, the former king, has locked himself in the throne room and refuses to get out of there. The There's no way he's alive. The prison of the new capital, far away in the most western part of the underground. Mm hmm. After the king left us, everything went downhill. Right. I heard that the new capital is in chaos yeah. because of the heavy restrictions of literally everything. Electricity, water. Man, what a nightmare. Everything Absolute nightmare. And they have a point in honesty with the whole, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll save it till afterwards. The reason for it is that the city is located far away from the old capital and, and other major cities, making the aid transportation Time's become independent, man. Violent riots, making the city the most dangerous place in the underground. Uh oh. Odin, meanwhile, is, is suffering the same thing as the new capital. The lack of food and electricity led to massive famine and unrest in the region. I can imagine. It's like France all over again. The French Revolution. 50% of the territory in Hotland became uninhabitable because of the explosions and wildfires yeah. that happened about a month ago. Damn. The whole underground is in turmoil. We have no leader to follow, no plans, no ideas what to do. I mean, we have some ideas, but it's unlikely that they might work. Hey, it's not your fault, Doc. I, I just shoot yourself in the head. The I don't think they have guns, do they? That was a joke, guys. I don't know why I was joking about shooting yourself in the head. Things... Uh, well, I mean, I was going to say things get better, but I don't know if they can in, this, in these circumstances. It does look dire, I'm not going to lie. So two months after the explosion. In the Waterfall region, specifically in the administrative capital of the region, Blaberg, a meeting between the former Waterfall Royal Army was held. Since the king, who was in command of all that, the army in every region resigned, there was no one in command of the army. As a result, the most powerful and influential general of all the Waterfall military, General Undyne, was elected as the leader of the army. General Undyne was furious with the resignation of the king, believing that Asgore betrayed his own pa people. Okay. That was a nightmare of a boss fight. Under her command, the Monster Kind Revolutionary Army, or MRA, was formed. That sounds, I don't know why I'm doing that. The goal of the MRA was to organize a coup against the remaining monarchist government located in the old capital and establish a new state where monsters would never go hungry again. At least that's what the military promised to the people. Okay, so, you know, a rebellion. The waterfall under the control of the military declared independence from the kingdom, establishing the monster kind democratic state. It was the beginning of the underground civil war. Oh, good lord. Captain America. 
the MRA quickly advanced through Hotland, massacring the armies that were still loyal to the king. When they reached the old capital, brutal street battles began across the city, which led to even more casualties and destruction that the city has never seen before. After hours of fighting, the MRA broke through security of the royal castle and raided it. General Undyne ran straight towards the throne room where Asgore was. God, okay. Boss fight. Asgore, get out of there and face me, you traitor. You abandoned us. Get out of there and face me. There you are. Prepare yourself. After a while, General Undyne was thrown out of the th throne room with heavy injuries. Oh crap, Asgore fucked you up. Don't mess with Asgore. He has nothing to lose. The MRA was forced to retreat. The underground civil war ended, with both sides achieving nothing but more destruction and casualties. Really? Just like that? All of that for what? For nothing? Is this the moon? What is this? It's dark like in a void. How unfortunate that it all came to this. Though what was this guy's E's name again? E something. Only a small percentage of people no. Access to still somehow working TV nowadays. Oh dear lord. Anyway, there is no time for me to be sad and all that. I gotta check Dr. Alphys. I haven't seen her at all today. Check who? I, I, I'm obsessed with rolling these these D and D dice now, guys. Hang on, Alice. Alphys. Oh, the scientist got you. And I know that you can't live without eating at least one can per day. Hello? Alphys? Come on, darling. It's time to come out. Oh my god. No, what? I don't blame her. I generally don't blame her. I'd be feeling the same way. Why? Why did you do that, Alphys? What did I do? It's got Doki Doki Literature Club vibes. I was always there and you could talk with me about your problems. You know I can't just die. You abandoned me to rot all alone in this hellhole. Can I just control or delete? Why, Alphys? I'm so sorry. It's not looking good, man. It's not looking good in Mount Ebot, or whatever this place is called, the underground, the underworld. Evolution of monsters throughout the years. Okay, so that's stage one, 1973 to 1977. So this is after the core exploded. Nineteen seventy-seven tonight. Gee, this was quick evolution. My God. It makes you think how humans would evolve if, like, we we were put in the same circumstances. No day, no like sunlight or whatever. Obviously, it would take thousands of years to evolve. But I wonder what what we would turn into. Like, obviously, our vision would probably get better. Maybe we'd develop some kind of rough skin to deal with like climbing on rock. That's what's great about life. It evolves. What is that? Stage 3, 1980 to 1990. Oh, okay. Is this all going to tie in now to the climbers? Damn. Stage 4. Turns like a freaking polar bear with a human face. That's kind of disturbing. Oh, 
good lord. That was a quick evolution, I'm not gonna lie. Stage five. Oh, camera stopped recording. Okay, we're in the last minute here. And when did the climbers or the people go missing? Under Mount Ebot. By Dr. Flying Fish. Concept based on the game Undertale by Toby Fox. You know, I feel like playing Undertale now, in honesty. I'd love to play that game again. It was fantastic. Phenomenal. I loved that game. Really good. The thing is, I didn't like it to begin with. Yeah, you can tell D Dr. Flying Fish did all the... The only thing I would say, Dr. Flying Fish, is if you could have friends. I mean, he did a good job of, like, portraying different people, but it was obvious that it was the same person. It's like, when I do voices... I'm sure it's obvious to other people that it's like, oh yeah, I mean, it's a voice, but you can still tell it's me. Like, you can hear you underneath the voice. So it's always good to get, like, different um, voice acts involved. I understand if you can't pay them or whatever, but just if it's a passion project, getting friends involved or whatever, always helps. But I'd say you did a very good job with that. I forgot what I was about to say. I was going to say something. Thank you for watching, liking, and commenting on each episode. Guys, you know what to do. Without your help and support, this series would probably never be finished or even made in the first place. Listen, it is. It's when when you get a reaction of a community or like you see like your series is doing well, it's easier to carry it on and like to get more like motivation from it and drive. But when you do, you see it's not really performing well, you can get into your own head and be like, oh man, this sucks. Like obviously people don't want to see this. You got to sometimes push past that as well. But it's true that if... You get a lot of support, it's easier for the person to want to continue. The end. So that was season one. Yeah, I'd say the only problem that I had with Undertale with the fan base was so toxic. When it first came out, hey, who's this guy right here, guys? Let's have a look. Today we're doing just a one-off video, but that's amazing. The fan base was very toxic. Like if you didn't do a route the certain way, if you didn't do like the pacifist route, then the genocide route, then whatever came after that, like people would be disliking your videos. I, I didn't touch Undertale for the first couple of years, few years, maybe three or four years. It was only three or four years after Undertale released that I was like, oh, I'll give it a go now. But it just, uh, there was a bad taste left in my mouth because of that, because of how the fans were. And even like, because Jacksepticeye got really popular with doing it and he had certain voices voices he would do for characters and then other people they're obviously children obviously because no fully grown adult would be going around commenting no that's not his voice all right the jacksepticeye sans voice it's the true canon voice and i know probably jacksepticeye got annoyed with that like guys it's just a game you know genuinely though the game and the soundtrack was an experience brilliant really really good fantastic game deserved all the love that it got and I'm not sure what's going on with Delta Rune right now. They released like one episode and I, they've not released anything since. I don't know what Toby Fox is doing, but you know what? It is what it is. But that was a good series. So I'm guessing, let me just quickly go back to the first episode here. It doesn't actually say the year, does it here? Yeah, it doesn't actually say the year. So because I'm guessing what happens at the end of this video here, the disappearing one, you see that this um, Asgore, I think that is, turns into this freaking monster. I'm assuming that this was the 2000s because that's when these monsters were kind of evolving into that. So I'm guessing that's why, what the timeline is for this. I enjoyed the story, but like I said, the, the only criticisms I have are like the voice acting and the, the sound design at some points were very off-putting. But maybe, you know, that's just me being snobby. I, I, I realize quickly when things don't seem right um and it just throws me out uh, but i do appreciate the story and anyone who goes out their way to create content like this analog horrors whatever it may be i uh, you know i round of applause because at least you're trying to create something you know and you can't fault that i encourage everyone to try their hand at like creating their own thing being artistic with something so that was yeah mount under mount ebot season one i'm not sure where season two is going to go i'm guessing it's just going to look into humans interacting with these monsters again but like i said those two guys who went down uh to go investigate the city all they need is seven souls to get out but then again maybe it's different in this universe of undertale where they don't necessarily need that 
and they haven't figured that, that out that they need that. But there we go, guys. Go check out Dr. Flying Fish for yourself. Go give the series a like. Go comment some nice stuff. Go subscribe. And if you enjoyed my reaction, why not leave a like rating, subscribe. This is the majority of my content reacting to analog horrors. So thank you for the support as always, guys. It means a lot to me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.